Well, it's been a couple of weeks, I think it's time to do an update and inform you guys what I've been up to. G'day guys and welcome back to Layla Central and uh, indeed welcome back to the layout shed and uh, as you can see behind me is still pretty uh, blank. Um, in short, I've been quite busy. Uh, life um, is getting in the way a lot, uh, particularly uh, as for those that have been following the channel for a while, I've been landscaping my backyard, um, been, been making progress, it's slow. Um, you know, for example, the other weekend I moved in 19 cubic metres of actual stone. Um, I'm still working on areas as I mean, the, the backyard's taking an awful, awful lot of time uh, out of the layered room right here. Having said that though, we have been making some progress. Um, progress is better than no progress. Um, it is slow, but uh, what I'll do is I'll stop talking for now and uh, we'll jump straight to the actual video.
Okay, so that's the progress update so far, and that's essentially on the western side of the actual wall way over across over there. Uh, so I've got my three tiers in along that wall, it's about six metres in length, um, or in equivalent uh, terms, it's 18 metres worth of bench work I've already created and put in. Uh, so while of you know, 18 metres sounds an awful lot, the fact that it's a multi-deck layout itself that I'm making, doesn't look like I'm making a lot of progress. Um, but in truth, it probably is a fair bit of progress. Um, now, uh, in, in addition to doing that as well, I've also put in a stud wall over here, which I'll talk about after this video. Okay, so that stud wall that you just saw in those two pictures there essentially is this area right here and it goes around my window and my door itself and there's a good space to come in through the door here. Um, so what I'll do is I'll change the camera around, show you this frame and explain some of the issues that I've had with this um, because um, there were some unforeseen problems um, which wouldn't have actually thought would occur. Um, so, and again, that also delayed a bit of time and how the progress has been going. So we'll talk about that. Okay, so here we are looking at the stud wall. I might actually just reduce the tripod back a bit so you can see a bit more clearer right there. So as you can see with this stud wall itself, um, we've got a large gap, I'll get my finger in, in between here to step right in, which is fine. Had to put in some bracing right here as well. And that's for my bench work to run right across. Um, and then I'll have my swing gate about here for both uh, levels right here. I've kept the, I put this bar right across here to essentially, uh, if I do wish to cover this area up, I can, but I'll still have a lot of light coming in through here. A um, bit unsure as to what I'm going to do here and amongst the bench work, but obviously the fill yards and everything will be across here. Um, it's all connected to the actual walls themselves, very strong. This area here though on the side was a massive problem and I'll get in closer and show you what I'm doing. Okay, so here we are a bit more close. And now the frame itself, the main frame, I measured it all up, etc. Um, counted for a few things and go straight up, across and down here. Now, as you'll notice over here, I've got all these various packers here, which was not foreseen at all. Um, ideally, what was supposed to be is this thickness of the timber here is the same as this and this here, which I was expecting to need to double up. Um, however, I did find that I also needed to actually put in some chocks. Uh, of timber right in here to make it nice and tight and the main reason being was my frame wasn't out of square because I took the absolute care I could to make it square and checked it again it was perfectly fine but this plaster wall right here which covers up one of my beams 
the edge of it right here, so starting at the top here and going all the way down to the ground, actually wasn't level um, and dead straight. So as a result, it you know cur it was in the, in here, but as it got closer to the ground, it was coming out more um, to the point where this stick of timber right here, for example, that you see, um, this little piece here by memory is um, around about 18 or 20 millimeters. Same with this piece right here. However, the piece down below it is getting thinner. Um, so I had this difficult choice. I could either make my frame not square to compensate for this wall that was out, or I still keep it square, attach it to the wall over here, because this was completely dead level and square, that um, bit of plaster, and I chock it up with some more timber in these areas, which is what I've decided to do. Um, so that was unforeseeable. Now, just to get some ideas on how big this actual wall is that I've made, going from end to end, we're looking around about three meters, and the height from ground to the top is about 2.6 meters. So quite big, and unfortunately, being the uh, the person that I am, tried to move it and put it up by myself. Now, I maneuvered it uh, with no problems. Uh, it was difficult to get it into place because I had to clear up uh, and make space in the actual shed itself, so I could maneuver it out. Lifted it up anyway, got it in place, and that was all good and well. I was supposed to have the next day in here to you know, do more bench work, etc., only to wake up with a bit of a pain in my back. I strained myself. So as a result, I've been out of action for a little bit as well, due to me lifting some things that I should have probably gotten some help. Okay, so, that was another thing that's essentially slowed the progress down um, because I put this frame up by myself. Now I lifted it without prob no problems or whatever, it was all good. But essentially for the last, well, now pretty much almost a week, two weeks, my lower back hasn't been the best. As a result, I've been taking it very easy. I've been doing strenuous work. Um, I've done a little bit in the backyard, but really not much um, because it's, it's not muscle sprain, it's not, uh, I don't know what to describe it, but it's not a normal pain that I've dealt with in the past, um, to the point where I need to get it checked out. Um, but it's not rendering me completely useless, of course. Uh, I mean, I am useless in nature. But um, the, I'm, I'm taking it easy at the moment. Um, I'm pushing myself extremely hard. I'm trying to get the backyard done, um, and I want it done relatively quick. Um, I've got, I'm quite busy at work. And of course, I'm trying to push myself in here. One, because I want to get the trains running again. Um, and of course, keep the content coming up to you guys. Um, but I'm, so I've got to slow down a bit, which is what I'm doing. I'm trying to take on too much in life. Um, and it's all work, 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 work in the backyard, work in here, or at actual work itself. And of course, you know, trying to be a, uh, a family person and a dad and a partner as well, um, you know, it's, I'm pushing myself too hard. So that's why the progress has been a little bit slow in here. Um, but as I mentioned, you know, and you've seen the other decks over there are come up quite well. Um, so, and to put it in perspective, I'll show you what else has been actually done and what the plan is moving forward. Okay, so here we are. So there's the, the end of the frame right there. And as I mentioned, I've attached it to the actual uh, end of the wall there. And that's all nice and straight. It's plumb. It's absolutely perfect. Um, so as you can see, we've got a nice big blank canvas right here. I've pulled down essentially the bench work. I've moved things around. Uh, big cabinets, uh, storage units, they've all been removed. The only thing I've got left to address is this glass cabinet right here, which I'm going to keep in the shed. Um, but this uh, glass cabinet will be moved over into this corner here. Once I've got some bench work in, so tracks uh, and railway lines will go behind it. So this glass cabinet will sit about there somewhere um, in relation to that. Um, so as we uh, go from here, so I've got bench work here I need to put in, um, going, continuing right across. So let me rewind a bit. So once I get my bench work in across here, uh, so the three tiers, they'll continue to here and that's when they'll progress down across here. Now you can see me all painted bit of accent there, the blue. Um, so that'll just be behind it. Um, I'll continue around now at the moment. There's a lot of stuff shoved in places as I move around. Um, and as I move around and bench work gets put up and I've got uh, shelving to store things, I'm moving more and more stuff above um, at the moment. So at, as you can see at this stage, all this is in the corner. Once I get some bench work in over the other side, a lot of this stuff as well will be stored over there. So as I mentioned in the past with my videos, it's essentially 
a chain, uh, a chain bit of work. As things progress, things get moved around and it constantly progresses. So while it's a mess at the moment, as I get my bench work in, this will be tied up as I make my way around. So as we go around, then we get to the bench work over here where I'm up to. Um, and as you can see, I'm already storing polystyrene and other things. I've already got storage here that I haven't actually put some stuff on just yet. Um, so a lot of stuff that you see in these areas here will get moved up there. Um, it'll work in quite well. Um, so while it does look quite messy, I can see some tidiness appearing as well. Um, you know, and uh, you might sort of see it, but just in amongst here, you can see a bit of a cabinet. Um, as well, which fits perfectly underneath the bench work. That's just the kitchen cabinet. Um, all the stuff that, uh, so you might remember there was a big metal cabinet that used to sit here along with a timber unit with a hutch. Um, all the contents of that is in that kitchen cabinet. That's how good the storage is in that, um, which I plan to get some more of, which will be behind me in the bench work. Um, so again, get all this stuff, put it away, close the doors and it's gone, it's hidden. Uh, you won't see it. Um, so that's the uh, that's the plan. Now, as you can see down here, we've got a long stick of timber. Now, that's not in place. That's just to give me a bit of a guide on some stuff. So I'll move the tripod over. I'll show you what I mean. So there's the stick of timber just essentially there. Now, that is essentially the length of my stud wall I've got to build for the middle of the actual room itself. Now, I've got some extra timber supports in here already attached. So one there and one just up here. And what the goal is, is I'll build a frame. Now, uh, this is going to be quite a large uh, stud wall, as you can see. It goes from there all the way underneath the chair and over to, you know, finishes about here somewhere. It's essentially about four metres in length. Um, now, it won't be as tall as the stud wall I made across the actual uh, door itself, but it's certainly longer. Um, and I'm going to have to uh, build, you know, clear all this space in the middle, build it on the floor, and then raise it up. Um, and attach it. So that'll be my ben um, my main wall where I'll attach my next lot of bench work as well. But that won't occur until I've gotten all this stuff over the other side up. So once I get the bench work in across here, etc., and as I get closer to this, all this stuff will be, maneuver, uh, be moved over to here. As I continue around to here into the centre part, and once that's done, a lot of this stuff in the middle here and behind me should be cleared away. So then I can build my stub wall and then get that propped up uh, and then secure it. So it's been, uh, like I mentioned, still a long way to go. Um, even though I've essentially only covered this amount of length of actual space, um, which, you know, is about six metres in length, it's about 18 metres, well, it's about 19 metres if you want to count these, or 20 metres, worth of uh, bench work that I've created and put up. However, I've only gotten uh, six metres in length done so far. Um, so it's a bit crazy, but uh, we're getting there. Now, this timber here is a lot of uh, the timber used for the other previous layout uh, as well. Now, that is all going to be used as I produce uh, the bench work. So we'll use this as an example. Some of that thicker timber is going to be cut down and put into here so then I can fix a nice back scene across. I'm going to hide my wires behind there for the lighting and everything else. So this timber, while it's still amassed in quite a large quantity, it's not going to waste at all. Um, and it will go and disappear as I progress through. Um, and just not there as yet. Now, the other thing you may have noticed in some of my clips is this big box right here. So I'll uh, cover that off and what exactly that is because I have been distracted, but um, I need something to do. Otherwise, I'm going nuts inside the home, resting my back. So just recently, uh, Trumpeter had uh, released a brand new retooled, uh, well not retooled, but a brand new model kit of the Titanic itself in uh, one to two hundredths scale. Now this scale and this model itself comes with brass etch. It is the most finest and detailed kit of the Titanic that I've been able to ever find. Now this was just released. Um, now. Apart from railways, I'm a bit of a, a buff when it comes to the Titanic. I, it's just fascination to me, uh, as was my pa. My pa used to be fascinated with the Titanic, and he was the one that got me introduced to trains. And uh, I've always wanted a model kit of the Titanic. However, the smaller kits out there um, never appealed to me because I found they were out of scale. Uh, and what I mean by that is like handrails and stuff like these, um, the actual supports, wires, all that sort of fun stuff was way too chunky. Um, because being plastic, they, you know, they'd be, they'd have to be thick in order to be, have, provide any form of strength. So while I wanted a model, it never actually grabbed my attention. Now, 
when this came out, I jumped at it. Um, now, this is quite a very big box. You can see some boxes of flex track, which what I'll do is I'll bring them up and put them close to show you. There's your standard length of flex track in the box right there. These are empty boxes, but just to show you the size now, this length of the model is over 1.4 meters. Um, it is a very, very big model. Now, given that I'm putting storage up and some shelving and all sorts of stuff, uh, one of the things I plan to do is have that model on display here. Um, now, I've already started work on it, um, which is just below here, I'll just the camera so you can actually see it. But there's the length of the Titanic so far. Uh, and it's at the point where I need to start painting uh, the hull and a few other bits. Now I'll, um, I'll bring it down. The detail on this is absolutely phenomenal. Um, and the reason I've got this is, well, I can't use power tools after hours. Um, if I've got a saw back and I need to sit, well, I can do it. But I can also still get some hobby done um, as well. Now, some people say, oh, but Clinton, you can... Uh, do some scratch building, you can do all sorts of things for the railway coming up that you're building. And yeah, indeed I could, um, but I think one of the things we need to do every once in a while is take a break from the railway, do something different. Um, so, you know, there's the actual bow of the actual ship itself, and uh, it's quite, quite long. Um, the detail is just phenomenal on this. Like, if I get up here and actually zoom the camera in, see if that'll uh, focus. I don't think it's going to affect the guess. I don't know how it's trying. Not quite. What I'll do is I'll bring the camera closer rather than zooming in. And I'll see if we can uh, get the detail in. Because um, in some parts, the rivets, uh, the portholes, absolutely everything's in there. They're like, you can see that, but the rivets aren't coming up. This is full of rivets. Um, it's just insane. Let me bring it a bit closer. I'll try and get the rivets in there. Oh, sort of. It's a little bit crazy, they're, that, they're there, but um, they're sort of showing up there. So it's just nuts. This kit itself, um, like I said, it's got brass etch. I've already been attaching some of the brass pieces down there. Um, comes with such intricate detail. Now, as I mentioned, it is 200 scale. Now, um, you know, nothing railway related, of course, but it has sparked a couple of extra ideas that I didn't consider beforehand. Now, what I mean by that is how awesome would it be if um, I was able to make a model railway but incorporate the Titanic in it? So what I've actually had a bit of a thought about, and this would be a long-term sort of idea, nothing uh, current or recent, or not recent, uh, in the near future, but in the far future, what I might actually do is use this as part of a train layout for an exhibition. So what would the plan actually be, or my ideas? Well, this is obviously one to 200 scale. So uh, N scale comes close, but it's not there. So what we could do, or what I can do, is a lot of model railroad is use different scales and different sizes of scenery to create perspective and fool the eye a bit. So what I'm actually thinking of is if I was able to actually use the Titanic right at the back and have it look like it's docked at a pier, and we have a series of freight trains, you know, back in the 19, uh, 1912, etc. And the wagons are around here with, you know, produce, fruit, meat, um, all sorts of supplies, even mail, and have a shunting layout on a pier where the Titanic's actually docked and with the detail that it's got. It might fool the eye a little bit. Um, it would certainly be quite impressive as a uh, layout at the uh, train exhibitions. Um, but yeah, we'll, uh, we'll wait and see. But at least, um, you know, I'm very happy I've gotten this model. It's not railway related, of course. But, um, you know, this uh, this channel will, is essentially me just blogging hobby, what I'm actually doing, what I'm up to, and sharing it with you guys. Um, so, so I'm not sure whether any of you guys are interested in seeing updates on me actually doing this or if you want videos of me painting it, detailing it, whatever it may be. Um, yeah, you know, put your comments down below. Uh, tell me what you think. Are you into the Titanic yourself? Um, do you want me to just give some updates uh, when I do my railway update on what I've been up to? Or do you want me to start uploading some separate videos specific to this um, as well? So uh, leave your comments below, leave your thoughts. Tell me what you think, um, and you know, I'll just go from there. I'm happy to do either. Um, obviously, I'll have more fun not recording video, because it does get in the way when you're doing things on this, but um, yeah, we'll wait and see what goes on. 
Just thought I'd also show you some of the brass uh, pieces that I've got. Um, so for example, we've got all these window frames right here. Um, and now here's my actual thumb right next to it. Um, that is a lot of window frames. This is only one side. I've got like four sheets identical to this. These are brass uh, seats here, which um, if I can get them a bit more closer, you might be able to see the ridges like there. See all the intricate detail there. Um, you know, folding those uh, so they look like actual seats. Um, there's rails, there's very fine detailed ladders like this. Um, you know, there's some impressive, impressive detail on this, um, including like, you have a look at this. These are metal grates, and each of these do have the actual grates there, as you can see. Like, um, you know, painting all this, gluing them together, handrails for the ship. Um, it's a monster, an absolute monster. But, um, you know, I'm up to the challenge. I certainly uh, have always wanted a model of the Titanic, and uh, well, now I've got one. It's uh, <laughs> obviously going to be something that I'll be doing in between things uh, in that regards. Okay, the other thing I've been working on uh, in the background is uh, for Valentine's Day, I end up getting this marvellous uh, 1 to 35 scale German Tiger Tank uh, Tamiya kit. Uh, for Valentine's Day. So in the meantime, while I haven't been doing things, I've essentially been assembling this this uh, wonderful kit together um, and uh, painting it and weathering it up, as you can see there. Um, still got a lot, a lot of work to do to it. Um, but, um, you know, I've, I've been enjoying it. It's been so fun uh, get doing something like this. Um, so uh, still fair whack, to, whack of work to go, but I thought, I'd, you know, let's just show you guys this to see uh, what sort of hobby and what sort of stuff I've been up to. Um, but yeah, got a bit of dust and dirt uh, on there. Need to do a fair bit of extra uh, weathering as well, trying to get things in blended um, a bit more, make it a bit more softer. But um, overall, I'm quite happy with it so far and how it's turning out um, with it. And um, yeah, I'll tell you what, it's uh, it's been enjoyable. Um, I haven't done a World War II model kit in years, and I'm talking a long time. My last model kit that I did of a World War II thing was easily back in 96 when I was in grade six. Um, 996 and back then they were very small kits like the t tank cell models I used to some used to be this sort of big we're talking you know um, a quarter of the size of this and this is a beast um, and you know I've, uh, I've enjoyed other aspects of hobbying such as doing this and just the just the painting fiddling with oils and doing stuff um, it's been quite uh, quite good quite enjoyable as you can see there so um, you know been busy doing that um, so working away at that and um, yeah no hurry, just chip away it as I go. Obviously, I haven't done the painting details like you know shovels, guns, and ropes and stuff like that. Just been working on the armor, um, but uh, so far so good. She's uh, she's coming up well. I'm very happy with uh, how it's gone gone along, and uh, ultimately it's been uh, you know a pleasant change of pace when it comes to hobby work. Um, so uh, yeah, no, she's come along quite well. Very happy with uh, with that. Some dirt deposits like these things here are uh, and the bad here. I need to soften a bit as well, so you know, fair bit of work left to go. I've got a, a commander to a tank, ca commander to go on the top there, or, or captain, whatever you call them. <laughs> um, get them up there, and uh, yeah, so have a bit of fun with that. Okay, so that's the update, guys, on what's been happening with the channel itself. Uh, I've been busy essentially in life, work, everything else. You know, pushing myself very hard, and as a result, you know, putting myself out for a bit, so nothing gets done. Um, but now being distracted by a, a nice big model of the uh, Titanic as well. Now I've never put a ship together in the way of a model kit, so um, this is it's all completely new to me. I've never done brass etch before. Uh, I've seen plenty of people do it, know what, I've, what I'm involved there um, in order to assemble it. Um, but anyway, now what I wanted to do is finish this video off on a bit of a, a discussion uh, with you guys and just give you some information what's been going on. Um, now, some of you guys have been expressing some excellent support and comments down below in my previous videos uh, in regards to the fires that have been occurring here in Australia. Um, so, you know, the love, the support, the comments that you guys have been passing on, including the well wishes, has been fantastic. Um, and, you know, I can't say anything else except that you guys rock. Um, you're a great bunch of people. Now, to put it in perspective, the fires haven't affected me at all, which I'm very, very grateful for. Um, the fires, or the closest fire, had been about three hours east of where I live, um, so not near it. However, um, due to the sheer scale of the fires, um, a lot of smoke had been drifting down. So in some cases, the Environmental Protection Agency had rated the oxygen and the breathing in the areas as hazardous and toxic um, due to 
just the amount of smoke that's been around. Visibility has been terrible in some days. You know, you go driving and it's like it's a foggy day because of all the smoke. Um, you know, terrible for those that are that are asthmatics, um, as well as elderly people, anyone that's got sensitive throats as well. Um, but uh, thankfully, you know, we've had some wonderful support across the globe uh, from our friends in the US. We've had uh, friends from Canada come over, you know, support from governments around the world to support the Australians and essentially their fires. Um, so, you know, it's great. Um, you know, you see the turmoil, the problems that happen in the world, but it's great to see, you know, as a, you know, as a, or what do you call it, a species, if you want to call it that, you know, we can get together in a time of need. Um, so, you know, the, the support has been fantastic, even though I haven't been directly affected by what has been occurring. Um, as an Australian, I've been proud of not only our Australian firefighters and people that have gone out of the way to support, uh, support us, but, you know, other countries around that have expressed concern. So otherwise, I've been quite good uh, and I've been safe, which is great. And the other thing that's going on at the moment is, of course, this coronavirus. Now, um, I work for a cleaning and sanitation company, um, so we're very up there at the moment regards what's going on, the facts and all that stuff. Now, am I going to do a video about it? No. All I'm going to say is I am safe at the moment, I'm good, and I hope you guys are as well. Um, the only thing I will stress is, you know, take care of yourselves, take care of your loved ones out there. Um, you know, it's uh, it's great if you've got a hobby room like me, so if I need to be isolated for 14 days, guess where I'll be? I'll be isolated in here, which is not a bad thing in my books. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, look, all jokes aside, um, you know, new diseases and things like that coming through is not good or viruses um so but at the end of the day all i can say is i wish you guys all the very best out there whether you're a subscriber or not and take care of yourself and your loved ones so otherwise uh, that's it for this video guys i'm sure it's not super long um now as i mentioned as well give your comments down below on what your, your thoughts are on the titanic um obviously if it's to do with the railway put those down below as well i do read them all and do respond to them eventually um and um you know it's uh let's face it life's good otherwise and um yeah i hope to get another video up soon because i'm itching to get this railway up and running again um just hearing the sounds of things running around would be you know therapeutic in my mind to hear um so yeah but otherwise uh take care and bye for now mm -hmm.